Hello, good morning, friends. Welcome back to your favorite channel, Kodwan Digest. Today, in this video, we will learn about event sourcing design pattern for microservices. I'll explain what is event sourcing design pattern, where to use it, and what are the advantages of this design pattern. I'll also give you a real world example of this design pattern. So stay tuned, it is going to be very exciting and there is a lot of learning in this video. Friends, in the previous video, we discussed about CQRS design pattern. Can you explain what is CQRS design pattern all about? Provide your answer in the comment section of this video. If you have not seen that video, so please go and watch that video. The link is provided on your screen and also given in the description section of this video. So for more information, go and watch the previous video on Kurban Digest channel. What you need to understand, Susan, is that everyone has an agenda, okay? Friends, here is an agenda of this video. I'll give you introduction of event sourcing design pattern. Then we'll see the real world example of event sourcing design pattern. Then I'll explain you where and how to use event sourcing design pattern in which scenario we should use event sourcing design pattern. Then we'll also understand the benefits of event sourcing design pattern. What are the advantages and disadvantages we have using event sourcing design pattern. And at the end, I'll also touch upon the next design pattern that I'm going to cover in coming videos. So stay tuned. Do watch this video till end. It is going to be very exciting and there is a lot of learning in this video. Friends, before we proceed in this video, I request you to subscribe this channel to grow Code One Digest family. Friends, I'm creating a lot of quality videos on programming, coding concepts, design pattern and design principles, cloud and container technologies, but I'm not getting subscribers. I request you to like, share and subscribe this channel so that I can grow our Code One Digest family. Thank you. All right, let's get started. Okay, friends, so now let's start with the event sourcing design pattern. This is the fourth design pattern in database design pattern category. This pattern says instead of storing just the current state of the data in a domain, use an append only storage to record the full series of actions taken on the data. Event sourcing is an architectural design pattern that stores the data in an append only logs. Event sourcing pattern defines an approach to handle operation on the data by a sequence of events, each of which is recorded in a append only storage. Event sourcing pattern is typically used with the CQRS pattern to sync the data from write database to read database. Event sourcing pattern with CQRS decouple read and write workload and optimize for the performance, scalability, and security. Data in event sourcing DB is stored as a series of events. Instead of updating the status of data record, it appends each change to sequential list of events. The event sourcing pattern works effectively with the CQRS pattern because data can be reproduced for a specific event even if the command and query data storage have different schema. Microservices replay events from an event store to compute the appropriate state of their own data storage. By choosing this pattern, you can identify and reconstruct the application state for any point in time. What? I can, I, I do, I do not understand. Okay friends, now let's understand the event sourcing design pattern with a real world example. In this example, Kinesis data stream is the main component of a centralized event store. The event store captures application changes as events and persistent them on Amazon simple storage service that is S3. So in this example, we have few steps to be followed like whenever when the withdraw or credit microservice experience state change event, then they publish an event by writing a message into a Kinesis data stream. Other microservices such as balance or credit limit reads a copy of a message, filter it for relevance and forward it for the further processing. What the hell are you talking about? Okay friends, now let's see another example of event sourcing design pattern 
Here we'll understand this pattern with an e-commerce application. In this example, you can see user action of adding item to the cart are being captured in event source DB step by step. This example showing how to create a materialized view of the cart domain object using event source data, integrating the events with external application and systems and replaying events to create projections of the current state of specific entities. Really? Okay friends, now let's understand the use case of this design pattern. Where to use it, in which scenario we can use the event sourcing design pattern. Use this design pattern whenever events are used to completely rebuild the application state. Use this pattern when you require events to be replayed in the system and application state can be determined at any point in time. Use this pattern when you want to be able to reserve a specific event without having to start with a blank application state. Use this pattern when your system requires a stream of event that can easily be serialized to create an automated log. Use this pattern when your system requires heavy read operation but is light on write operations. Oh wow, that is really, that's amazing. Okay friends, now let's see some of the advantages of this design pattern. This design pattern, events are immutable and can be stored using an append only operation. Event source persists events rather than domain objects. Using events can simplify the implementation and management. Event sourcing can help prevent concurrent updates from causing conflict. The append only storage of events provides an audit trail that can be used to monitor action taken against the data storage. Though we have these advantages of event sourcing design pattern, we do have some of the drawbacks of this pattern. It is different and unfamiliar style of programming and it involves a learning curve in your team. The event source storage is difficult to query. You're goddamn right. Okay friend, now let me summarize what we learned in this video. I gave you introduction of event sourcing design pattern. We saw the real world example of event sourcing design pattern. Then I'll explain to you the scenario where event sourcing design pattern can be useful. Right? Then I also explain to you the benefits and drawbacks of event sourcing design pattern. So friends, let me know if you have already used this design pattern in your project or seen a scenario where this pattern can be useful. Please provide your answer in the comment section of this video. <laughs> yes, that's amazing. <laughs> Friends, in the next video, I'm going to discuss about Saga design pattern. I'll tell you what is Saga design pattern. I'll explain you the real world example of Saga design pattern. We'll understand the use cases and scenario of Saga design pattern. And I'll also give you the advantages and disadvantages of Saga design pattern. So stay tuned for the next video and keep watching Code One Digest. If you are new to the channel, so please do subscribe to our channel to grow Code One Digest family. I understood the assignment. Friends, if you like this video, so give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for the more interesting videos. Click on the bell icon for the latest video notifications and do not forget to share this video with all your friends and colleagues. This is very useful information for students, beginners, and software engineers. I am putting a lot of efforts in creating this contents. So please help me growing the Code One Digest family. Please subscribe to Code One Digest channel for the latest programming and technology related videos. Thank you.